Hi, my name is Jeremy. This is Red Means Recording, and uh, I've done a bunch of videos recently on the Morphogene and making custom reels for it, this friend right here. And um, I did a video where I walked through making some reels. I did a performance video where I had three performances that I used the reels in. And before I tear this down, I actually kind of just wanted to walk you through a patch and my philosophy in um, approaching this and stuff like that. I've already done a bunch of work here, so we're going to start by uh, just talking about what's going on. So here's Morphogene. Morphogene is clocked. Morphogene is also receiving a play gate every eight bars to reset the thing. So let's get Morphogene going in here. So I'm using one of the custom reels that I made in uh, the videos. So please go check those out um, and grab them. They're on Freesound. You can have them for free. Check the video description linky links. So I'm using one of my rhythmic, uh, I think, kinetic toys or something like that uh, reels in this. And uh, one of the things I have going on here is this Vera speed knob here um, can go between different speeds forward and different speeds backwards. And I have this life forms micro sequencer things here set to switch back and forth between forward and backwards in the same octave. So I can get cool backwards stuff and I can get cool forward stuff. So that's really fun. Morphogene, when you turn up the gene size and stuff like that, you'll get some nice sort of more esoteric sounds from your thing. So there's a lot to play with in here. Um, let's go ahead and just check out some of the other splices I have on here. So there's actually some like proper rhythmic sort of sequence data there that we'll be able to uh, play with, which is cool. Okay, what's next? Uh, we have the Spherical Wavetable Navigator doing a simple line being fed clock from the maestro. The maestro, since it can do timed square waves, can act as a clock. And the cool thing about this is, I think I have it on three, if I change the speed of the square wave, I change the speed of this. And I picked a wavetable that has a lot of variety. I want this to be a little growly so I can go down to chill somewhere around here <laughs> i don't know where the reset is something like that uh and i can bring it in and out and do uh the timing which is nice all right what's next let's talk about caster and pollux this is a beautiful huge sounding juno oscillator from the company winter bloom I have been playing around with it quite a bit. There are two oscillators. I have them both running out into the Popple filter by Afterlater Audio, and they're getting a pitch sequence from Renee. They're getting, uh, I think, the same pitch sequence, but this oscillator is pitched up a fifth, and uh, this one is at root. So um, these are both receiving uh, modulation. The Popple filter here is receiving modulation from the Maestro. Uh, and as I turn up these FM knobs, I will get more signal. So, our bass is currently receiving a 16th note downward ramp to give it that pulsy sound. And then we have the second oscillator receiving a more complex modulation signal. I love the sound of this oscillator, and it sounds amazing through a good filter. It's so big sounding that I don't need to drive it or anything, it just sounds really, really good through this. Uh, the pulse is up on both. I can turn these down as I want and make them a little different. Uh, I can ma manipulate the pulse width of oscillator B to get different tones as well. So a lot of fun there. Um, this this control here over the amount of modulation going into a signal, especially a filter, is really, really important to me when it comes to uh, performance because this is one of my main tools that I have. This amount of modulation that's going on. So we'll be playing with that quite a bit. Turn that down for right now. Next up is the surface. The surface is getting a... Oh, actually, before we talk about that, let's talk about how this is being sequenced from a pitch perspective, because I think... I don't know. This is one of those things about Renee that I'm not sure a lot of people have messed with all that much. So, um, or at least, I don't know, maybe they have. Renee is a Cartesian sequencer. It moves through a grid based on clock signals. 
our two channels here of seven and eight of Pam's are going into Rene to trigger uh, and move through these clock things. So X, which is feeding the pitch sequences into this, is going really slow. The clock going into it is really slow and you can see it advance here like every two bars basically. And it's going through this pitch sequence here, which gives us the semblance of this, this feeling of progression. And we're using different timed gates to create and different timed modulation things here to give the impression of a faster event. So we get slow note events and fast modulation events, which uh, allows me to create progressions, which is really, really nice. That tonic note, that bass note switching around on here, um, really, really useful in terms of getting that vibe. Um, I'm using the Zadar to create envelopes for A and B. I'm woefully underutilizing it for uh, just some basic envelopes in this case. Um, I just put it in this case recently to sort of get to know it better, and so far I've just been using it to create basic envelopes. But it's really powerful, and I, I intend to explore a bit more. It's just kind of wasted in this case, unfortunately. Um, okay, what's next? Should we reverse this? Yeah, sure, why not? Okay, we have the uh, the qubit surface, which is a physical modeling friend. So let's go ahead and turn that up. I love the plucked string thing on this. And I have my gain staging set up over here so that when I turn this all the way up, uh, this becomes a really nice, bright, glittery texture over everything. And um, that's because when I'm setting up a patch, I want to think about my gain staging and what's going to be able to, you know, come in and out and become a uh, performance tool for me. So uh, this is getting uh, pitch data from the Y sequence from Rene, which again is moving very slowly. If we go over to Y here, we'll see that we're moving pretty slow through this. That's all being fed into Shifty here, which is hawketing out the notes to both the Knit, uh, which is a Plots clone from After Labor Audio, after later, after later audio. Uh, so these are both receiving the same pitch data, but again, we're using slow pitch data to create the sense of progression, and then we are using um, faster triggers or faster um, uh, gate data to um, make each one have its own rhythm. So let's go ahead and turn up that plots line. So that's this friend right here. And what you'll notice is we sort of have this ramp sound to the level. I have the internal VCA turned all the way down and we're using an upward quarter note ramp from this to get that sense of almost like a side chain feel, which is really cool. So if I was to go over to here, I think it's this one right here, five, and I was to change this, you'd hear very quickly that uh, it's gonna affect the sound in a big way. Oh God, that wasn't it. <laughs> I guess it's two. Let's go ahead and change two. There we go. So, a lot of control over how that presents itself, but for this type of beat, I really like that side chain feel. So this is a last, uh, last resort sound. It's the sound that's going to come in near the end to really, like, bump up the arrangement. And uh, we have um, this and this running into Mimeophone for delay. And um, finally, we have this new thing, which I have been just loving in this, uh, in this you know, arrangement, and that's the deluge. The deluge is doing our drums and effects, and we're actually gonna be putting a little icing on the cake with the deluge to finish up this patch. Um, the deluge is getting clock from the maestro's clock out. So the maestro is getting clock from a 16th note pulse from here from Pam's, and then the clock out is going into the deluge. And it's so fucking easy to get this to work. Like, I, like I'm so, used to clock being a pain in the butt, but literally I just put the clock right in here and um, everything worked fine. It even has reset. So if I was to zoom in a bit, um, we would see that this is playing once I uh, hit this. So let's go ahead and turn on a sequence. So watch what happens when I stop and start again. So what I found with uh, including the deluge in here is like, I now have access to a gigantic sample library. I have access to an entire DAW, hardware DAW, that's really, really engaging and fun to use. These three channels here are what I've set up so far. We have an effects channel that does sweeps. We have a 16th note um, addition to our hi-hat and our main drums. So it's just like, there's so much power in this thing that it's it's really, 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 really fun to pair it with all the cool shit that's going on in here and get that sort of like 
simple, direct approach with all the power that the Deluge has with all the cool stuff that Modular can do as well. We got, you know, analog filters, we've got physical modeling, we've got granular sampling, we've got wavetable, all that stuff with all of its qualities. And then we have the Deluge on top of it. And it's just been my new favorite way to get the most out of a system like this. It's so, so cool. I have been using the Erica synth sample drum to add a few samples here and there in the drum and bass performance that I made. This had a little breakbeat going for the whole time and that I used the filter on. There's an internal filter you can set up. And in the down tempo performance, um, it had like a little rain sample. So, you know, just relying on the strengths of the things that you have and realizing like how much um, easier it is when you have this like grid based like sequence thing here that you can just turn on and off. It's synced to the beat. I can do things like these effects channels. So, uh, uh, this effects channel has a downward sweep and an upward sweep that uh, repeats every eight bars. Which is something that's almost impossible to do in easily in Eurorack. So here's our upward sweep right here. Having this uh, this eight bar sweep really allows me to uh, dig into the concept of eight bar structure when I'm working, and um, has provided a really really awesome um, focus for the whole the whole thing. I really like creating these kind of events. So what I want to do besides perform this for you is add. Uh, I think we're going to add some vocal snippets over here, um, just to sort of round out this uh, thing. So um, let's let's load some stuff up. Woke up early this morning. Jeff for the rooster. Woke up early this I like morning. these. I know we're in a minor key over here, so let's go ahead and use this stuff. Off of my mind. Woke up early this morning. So I'm going to load one into Woke each thing here, and then we're going to repitch them. Jeff for the rooster. Volume Duck will uh, work on whatever is down here in the kick for other things, so that's going to be these runs. So we should have a nice duck. Let's go ahead and check that out. Great. So now we have kick snare, hi hats, effects, and vocals. That's a great stuff to have from over here. We're going to add some sidechain later on in post. Um, I'm recording, let's see, what are our taps? This is a tap right here. You can see our tap right here. More uh, Mimeophone's getting a tap, and then the deluge is uh, being recorded separately as well. So I have drums and vocals to an extent. Um, I have all my dry signals, and I have my wet signals. And that's how I make decisions about um, how I'm going to record stuff and then process it later. So let's get a starting patch here. Let's go ahead and take our bass down. We want to create a starting state, right? And then we'll build that up. Let's see how the vocals sound uh, with. Let's see how the vocals sound. Woke up early this morning. Get for the rooster, crow for day. Woke up early this morning. What my baby, she used to lay. Woke up early this morning. My baby loved me and he even said goodbye. Woke up early this morning. By all the time. That's good. I like that. All right. So, thank you for watching. Um, should we do a recap? I guess we could. Um, Morphogene has those uh, reels that I put on it. Uh, we have this rhythmic one. It's receiving clock and play, and we can switch it back and forth between forward and backwards. We will be playing with the gene size and morph to get different glittery things, and we'll also be moving through Organize to give us um, different vibes as we go through. Spherical Wavetable Navigator is getting clock from here that we can change. It is going to be doing a simple six note sequence and we'll play with the wavetable as we go along. Castor and Pollux is getting a uh, one pitch sequence from um, Renee slowly. 
This oscillator, it's pitched a fifth up, and we have two different sets of wave shapes going on, kind of. Um, you know, we have our pulse width over here. It's running into popple, which is getting um, modulation from the maestro that we can control with these knobs to create brightness and power. And then we have the surface, which is doing a plucked string thing that we can bring in and out in terms of tone and brightness and decay. We have knit or plots, which is doing a sidechain-esque sort of lead sound that we'll bring in near the end. And we have the deluge doing the Humpty Hump. Anyways, that's it. I'm going to perform this now. Thank you for watching. My name is Jeremy. This is Red Means Recording, and I hope you have a wonderful day.